God bless everyone. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome everybody to Sword in Prayer. Amen. Um, of course, we want to encourage you all on this morning. We missed uh, this past Tuesday. Um, and so we just want to encourage you all in the word of the Lord on this morning. And um, I, I probably won't be here long on this morning. I just want to uh, release uh, this word that I, I believe that would encourage you, uh, give you strength to endure. Amen. And um, of course, those of you that are looking at the title or saw the title, and basically the title is Psalms 91, Psalms 91. And uh, that first verse says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. Amen. And so that's that's our uh, subject. Just he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High again shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. And I want to talk here uh, briefly and then we'll pray. Amen. Um, I know there are some things going on and I've shared this before and I want to just bring um, bring it up uh, right now uh, to show you sometimes of, of being able to discern the times, being able to discern uh, uh, seasons uh, that are upon us. And it's very important to be able to do this because if we can discern where we are, we can discern the season, we can discern the times. What happens is when we know we can activate some things as it relates to what God deems to be released during those seasons, okay? Sometimes we can look at situations that we are in. Uh, to give you an example of this is when Yahshua was here on the planet, and he talked to uh, the Pharisees, he talked to the scribes, he talked to the nation of Israel about being able to discern the time, you know, and he talked about uh, they, their hour of visitation, all right? He talked about their hour of visitation, and if they would have, you know, discerned that hour of visitation, what would be uh, released to them or what could be given to them at that time? But because they did not discern that hour of visitation, uh, matter of fact, let's just go to that scripture. Let's go to that scripture. That's in Luke 19. All right, Luke 19, uh, verse 44. And let's just let's read into it from verse 42. It says, "If thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thou day, and." the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the days shall come upon thee, and thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side. And then verse 44 says, and shall lay uh, thee even to with the ground in thy children within thee, and thou shalt not leave in thee one stone upon another. Because, watch this now. He says, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Now, I don't know if we understand the ramifications of this scripture. I'm, I'm, let me put this in perspective for you so we can understand what Yahshua is saying and what could have happened to them if they were to recognize Yahshua, if they were to recognize the season, the time, what the, the opportunity that was upon them. Now, notice that Yahshua prophesied that their children was going to be surrounded. All right. And this scripture also, if we look in other places as relates to uh, reference scriptures that uh, that reference this. <clears throat> um, he's talking about the destruction of Jerusalem. OK, he's talking about the destruction of Jerusalem and um, in other scriptures <clears throat> in, in Luke 21, 6. Let me just kind of uh, pack this all together so you all can just kind of see that he's talking about 
the destruction of Jerusalem. But uh, if we would, if we would have, if they would have discerned the time, would have understood the time, he said there would have been peace released to them. Okay. So in Luke 21, 6, he says, as for these things which you beheld, the days will come in that which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Okay. Matthews uh, 24, 2 goes into this as well. And then I would encourage you to read the whole entire chapter of Matthews uh, 24 uh, because it, can, it goes into detail about the destruction of Jerusalem. And so this verse in, in Luke 19 uh, verses 42, 43, and 44, he's saying if y'all would have understood, of course, in that day, if if they would have understood the hour that they were in, okay, let's look at verse 42 one more time. He says, if thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thou day, the things which belong unto thou peace, but now they are hid from their eye, from from thine eyes for the day shall come upon thee that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round up and keep thee in every side now again he's talking about the romans coming in sacking jerusalem and um burning the city down all right but jesus is saying something here y'all that alludes to if they would have known and understood who he was and understood the time and understood the season they would have been left in peace. <laughs> Do y'all hear, hear? I don't know if y'all hearing this and understanding this. He says in verse 42, if they would have known, they would have had peace. But because they didn't know, now what is left is that this city is going to be torn apart. This city is going to be burned down. This city is going to have no stone left upon another. If they would have understood and recognized the hour, and that is recognizing who Yahshua was, recognizing what he was trying to bring to them. He was trying to bring them salvation, not necessarily a deliverance from the Romans, but if you read Luke chapter 19, verse 42, he talks about if they would have understood the time of their visitation, uh, 43 and 48, they would have been left in peace. Maybe they would not have suffered the destruction. Maybe they would not have suffered what their children was going to go through. Again, read Matthew 24 and Luke 21 and Mark 13 to kind of get the full scope of what happened to them. Okay, so... <clears throat> um, so with that being said, you all, uh, I, I thought that was very important for us to grab hold to and see. Uh, matter of fact, watch this. In Luke 168, it says, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited, watch this, he has visited and redeemed his people. Okay? So I believe that Yahshua would have um, really brought Jerusalem into a place of peace if they would have understood uh, what was before them what opportunity that they had if they only would have accepted and received him uh as as a nation so we know that everybody didn't receive yahshua okay and so therefore destruction came upon jerusalem and destroyed it now now you might be saying what does this have to do with psalms 91 what does this have to do with psalms 91 and how am i going to connect the two hear me when we see certain events and certain things and when we have an opportunity uh, to embrace Messiah based upon the word of God. Now, I want to give you a couple of other scriptures before I go back to Psalms 91. Um, one of the scriptures that I've, I've said before and I've, I've said it many times, actually, and that is Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60. And Isaiah 60 says that when darkness is covering the earth, gross darkness, the people, he says, my light shall rise upon you. My glory shall be seen upon you. Okay. So if we go to Isaiah 60, all right, 
and look at even the first verse. He says, arise and shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. All right. So it's arise and shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Behold, it says, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness to people. But the but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy lights and kings to the brightness of thy rising. So simply uh, in, a, in this verse, the Lord is saying when darkness and calamity and destruction is coming upon the earth, understand that I'm not leaving you in that dark place without something that is coming from me to combat that. All right. So as darkness rise, my glory will also rise. Now, understand this in John chapter one. The Bible says darkness cannot comprehend the light. So I don't care how dark it gets. Light is going to always shine brighter. OK, now this is just simple understanding that I don't care how dark it gets. And I'm going to I'm going to go into something real quick here that's happening that I'm telling you that Psalm 91 is being activated right now. Psalms 91 is being activated and if you can discern the time, you can step into Psalms 91 and you can benefit from the glory of God. All right. OK. Another scripture talks about when sin abounds, then grace does much more about. All right. So when sin, sin abounds, it talks about grace abounding. So, again, that shows you another um, how God works that when. Certain things are happening in the earth. The, the, the Lord combats that. He don't just leave us there to fend for ourselves. OK, when we see events and we see situations that are happening in the earth, God does not leave us there alone. He does not leave us there to fend for ourselves. He always releases something against that thing, something against that entity something against that event, something against that season, he always stands up and rise. Let's, let's just look through the scripture. When Israel was, was in Egypt, what happened? Okay, they will begin to cry out concerning the, 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 uh, the captivity, concerning the, 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 the uh, hardship that they was put in, and God raised up a man of God called Moses, of course, and Moses went back to overthrow the nation of Egypt, right? And he overthrowed it with 10 plagues and brought the children of Israel out into the wilderness. And every situation that they faced in the wilderness, God always released them or gave them something to deal with. When they didn't have water, right? What did God do? He brought water. When they didn't have food, what did God do? He brought food. OK, he did not let any disease or any pestilence come near them, except when they got outside of the will of God. When they stepped out of the secret place of God, when they stepped out of the presence of God. And how did they step out by moaning and complaining? Right. Against Moses, against the leadership, instead of them crying out to God in the sense of praying in that relationship that God had already delivered them from, just like in Egypt. Right. So he always releases them and gives them protection as long as they stay under the shadow of his of his wings. Matter of fact, uh, I, I put the my uh, our church logo up on this morning to show you something here. I want you to look at something. This this is the mercy seat. This is known as the throne of God. All right. And of course, we have the cherubims there. Now, of course, in the realm of the spirit, it is much more majestic much more uh, 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 splendor, uh, glorious than what that picture is portraying, okay? So these pictures cannot display the glory of God to the degree that it is in the heavens, okay? Because in the heavens, yes, God is sitting on a throne, but that throne is alive, these living creatures, which I put on here before in the past. But when you begin to, oh, God, thank you for your presence on this morning. Ma shagya, ma no, 
Thank you for your presence on this morning. And so when you understand and see the glory of God in a real tangible way, you know, people have been caught up in the heavens to see the presence of God and live to talk about it. They seen the presence of God and live to talk about it, much like the patriarchs of old who encountered God face to face like Moses, who God said, I talked to him face to face as a man talked to his friend. And God gave Moses the blueprint on how to create uh, the heavenly materials for the tabernacle and for the temple as he did with David. And so what you're seeing here, when the scripture talks about abiding upon the shadows of the almighty, it's talking about being in the very presence of God and that the angels, he's not talking about just any type of angels. He's talking about archangels, uh, rather not archangels, cherubims and seraphims who have wings that are, you are under the presence of God. You are near the mercy seat. You are Oh, my God. Do y'all understand when when Psalms 91 talks about abiding upon the shadows of the almighty it's talking about literally dwelling at the at the mercy seat and under the shadow of the cherubims and under the shadow of the of the presence of God and under his wings. He says, shall we trust now with that being said, do you think anything can penetrate that? Nothing can penetrate being in that position, being in the place of mercy, being in the place of glory, being up under the shadow of the wings of the Most High God, being in the presence of the fiery presence of God. Nothing is going to come into that presence. OK, now. So going back to what I stated earlier about this is a Romans. All right. Romans chapter uh, five, verse 20. Romans chapter five, verse 20, where it says, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounds, grace do it much more abound. OK, it says that as sin reigned unto, unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Yahshua, Messiah, our God. All right. Our Lord. So I want y'all to see these two things that when darkness is covering, grace exceeds, grace abounds. When sin is moving, grace is abounding. When darkness is moving, when darkness is on earth, the glory of the God is exceedingly great. Okay, now let's go back to Psalms 91. What we are seeing in the earth, you all, is this disease breakout called the coronavirus, the coronavirus, right? So we're seeing this disease break out in China and they're talking about as though it's going to spread uh, because people have left China during the so-called New Year's and now begin to spread out through the earth, right? Psalms 91 is being activated, all right? Now, here's the thing. The presence and the power and the defense of God as for those who are believers, all right, those who have received salvation of the Lord, we can step into these things to the word of God because we're saved, all right, because we're saved. But sometimes certain scriptures don't come to our mind until certain events, until certain situations come, and then we think about these scriptures, all right? And so it is today. Um, it's with this coronavirus that is being spread out throughout the earth, right? I want to tell you that you have nothing to fear. Hallelujah. You have nothing to fear. You have nothing to be afraid of because of the presence of God. Hallelujah. And God, because of his loving kindness, hallelujah, for those who are his and those who make his presence, their abiding place. So let's go to Psalms 91 and let's just look at it. Hallelujah. And let's see uh, what we can pull from it. Psalms 91. And look at what it says. It says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadows of the almighty. All right. Now, th this, this dwelling place of the most high all right, it's, it's simply saying to us, he that makes God 
a, a place where I live. I live there. I reside in this place. I'm settled in this place, all right? I remain in this place, okay? And one, matter of fact, you all, one um, uh, word that describes this, the word dwelling is to be married. All right. I'm married. I'm joined to the Lord. It's like that that priestly uh, bride type of uh, uh, language. I'm joined. I'm married to the presence of God. I'm married to his his presence. Right. He says he that is. Let's just read it like that. He that is married. Uh, he that is joined. He that's in that intimate place, in that secret place of the most high God. All right, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So he's letting us know that the people that are joined to him, the people that are abiding in this place, are people who are simply married, people who are simply uh, uh, intimate with him. All right, people who have a relationship, who fellowship with him, who know him. These are the individuals who are finding themselves dwelling and abiding in the secret of the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. Matter of fact, there is um, uh, one of the, the, the Hebrew words, one of the Hebrew words in this scripture here, uh, as it relates to a definition, let me see, <clears throat> has the word uh, samak. Now, I know most of you all don't know what samak is, but samak uh, puts, gives you this idea Okay, gives you this idea of a thorn. Now we know that a thorn bush um, is is difficult for those those of us. At, when you look at the uh, when it talks about God uh, has a he's the door of the sheep, and any man come in any other way, if they clam over the wall, um, he is a thief and a robber. Right? There is this scripture uh, gives you this idea. In one of the Hebrew words here, uh, as thorns, uh, is the word uh, satar, okay, satar, and an, another word is uh, satra, uh, if I'm saying that word right, I might be missing that word up as it relates to how it's pronounced, but here's this, <clears throat> and it's the, if the, it, it means protection for one, in the sense of hiding, it means protection. But one of the Hebrew words there is the word samak. And the word samak in Hebrew, again, deals with protection. It deals with thorns uh, um, as it relates to something being hedged about with thorns. Now, let me give you an example. Do you remember when Satan came to Job and came to the Most High and said that you have a hedge of protection around Job and that's the only reason he's trusting you. That's the only reason he's holding on to you because you have this hedge of protection about him. If you remove the hedge, then he will curse you to your face. And of course, we already know the end of that story. Uh, God removes the hedge and the enemy begins to attack Job. But Job kept uh, his, 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 his sanity, all right? He did not curse God. Of course, there was one thing that Job had, I, I believe, that is a problem, and that is that he feared the very thing that would happen, all right? The Bible says that Job said, out of his own mouth, the thing that I feared the most has come upon me. Now, again, what, did, what came upon Job? Sickness, all right? He lost his cattle. He lost his children. And one of the things that we know that Job did every single day was release a sacrifice to God on the behalf of his children. So Job had a very uh, sensitive place for his children, and yet he lost them. And uh, again, I don't know if that was one of the things that Job feared, but we know Job had a fear. And it had to be either the loss of his children, uh, or the wealth that he had, and the sickness that came over his body. All right. So with that being said, you all, don't have nothing in you that the enemy can attach himself to to whereby he can go before God as an accuser of the brethren to, to assign something to you to whereby the heads of God is removed, all right? Now, with that being said, the secret place of the Most High God 
is this abiding in the, the abiding in the presence of God and under the shadow of the Almighty. It is like this thorn bush type of, of thing uh, as we look at this word. Now, what word am I referring to in, in this particular chapter? It is the place where it says the, in the secret place. The secret place is the word satar or sat or, sot, or sit roth, sit roth. And then if you look at, again, the first letter in that Hebrew word is the word samak. And that word samak, again, means protection. It means thorn. All right. And I thought I would just bring that to you so you can see what I'm saying. And another word there, another letter in the Hebrew word uh, uh, for samak is the letter um, uh, uh, hand. All right. Now. This hand is thought in the Hebrew thought, it is the hand of God. But listen, listen, here's another insight that I want to bring you into. You are, you are in the protection of God because of the hand of God upon you. But watch this. There's another letter. The other letter is, it looks like a cross. That means you are in covenant relationship. So I'm in this protection of God. Because of the hand of God and because of my relationship with God, now I'm under the shadow of the Almighty because of God's protection, because God's hand on my life, and because I'm in relationship as it relates to covenant. So this word hiding place is for those who are in covenant relationship, and it has also the head of a man as another letter, the head of a man, all right? Now, the significance of this head puts you in mind or puts you in the idea of authority, puts you in the idea of uh, being the first or being the principal. OK, so guess what? The principal thing is to be in covenant with God. The principal thing is to be to 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 attach yourself. Hallelujah. To the cross, to attach yourself to the to the sacrifice and receiving the salvation of God. This is how you come into covenant relationship, okay? And therefore, it puts you in the protection of God. Hallelujah. It brings you into that place of protection because I'm in relationship, okay? So I'm just breaking this word down, this Hebrew word for hiding place, all right? So now I'm beholding and I'm understanding who I am in Messiah, and that secret place becomes my hiding place because the hand of God, because I'm in covenant, I've been marked by God. One of the things that this, this word for tub, which is the cross, also means to be marked. And guess what? If you read the book of Revelation, th those who have the mark of God, those who have the mark of God in their foreheads, end up coming through uh, great tribulation, and they end up being the priests and the uh, kings of the Most High God. We're under the shadow of the Almighty. So I just wanted to release that to you to let you know that you have a protective layer over you. Why? Because of God's presence and you abiding in that place. Matter of fact, let's read a little bit further and we'll pray and I'll go ahead and release this call. Look, look down to verse two. It says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. And from the noisum pestilence. Now, noisum pestilence, the word pestilence deals with diseases. It deals with diseases that actually come from animals. Okay. Now, when you go and study the coronavirus, the coronavirus is also some type of animal attachment to it. All right. So pestilence has these diseases that are attached to animals. All right. So with that being said, <clears throat> this is why I'm saying Psalms 91 can be activated in your life when you come to understand this. Just like I would mention uh, Isaiah 60, Romans chapter 5, verse 20, 21, where it talks about certain things, certain events happening, then certain God will activate other things to combat that situation. So guess what? Guess what we need to be doing? We need to find ourselves under the covering of God. 
We need to find ourselves under the wings of God, right? His truth is our shield and buckler. It says, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day. No, verse 6 in Psalms 91, he says, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. All right. He says, a thousand shall fall at thy side, 10,000 at thy right hand. All right. But it should not come nigh thy dwelling. So with that being said, you all, I say one of the things that I share here and I say again, uh, me and my daughter, especially when we go off to school in the morning, one of the things that we talk about is the prayer, you know, the Lord's prayer. And then we pray uh, a more personal prayer that we say together. All right. So I'm teaching her, of course, the Lord's prayer, but I'm also sharing with her just a personal prayer concerning this virus. And so we pray over ourselves and we pray over the school. We pray over the hallways. We pray over the, the cafeteria. We pray, in the, we pray over the gym. We pray over the entire atmosphere of the school. And we say this simple prayer, just this simple prayer to activate the presence of God in our lives. Now, now you might be saying, well, I have the Holy Spirit in me. Yes, we do. Hallelujah. I'm saved. Yes, we are. Praise the Lord. Amen. But do you know how many saved people who catch diseases? Do you know how many people who uh, know God? and say uh, certain things and yet still catch diseases? I believe, saints, it's because sometimes we go through life and we don't have that relationship with God, and therefore we never activate Holy Spirit. We never speak to the Spirit. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And if you talk and have relationship, commune, with your spirit. The Bible says that we need to commune with our spirit. We need to meditate uh, and commune with the spirit of God, right? And what this does, it opens up and activates and gives activity to the realm of the spirit and give activity to God in us. Hallelujah. Because a lot of times when you just sit idly, yet you may be saved, but you sit idly, you never commune with God. Commune with him, have a sit down with him, have secret moments, getting into that secret place of prayer with him, resting in him, soaking in his presence, waiting in his presence. Hallelujah. We never activate those moments of God. And guess what? The spirit is lying dormant in you. The angels are lying dormant, waiting on you to communicate, to speak what thus says the Lord. So guess what? We pray, we talk, we commune with the Lord. And again, here is the simple prayer that I pray. I pray this over my food, but I also pray this just in general. Here are the words. Father, we thank you that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. For you dwell in us. Hallelujah. You live, you move, you have your being. Nothing will by no means harm me. We say no sickness, no disease, no infirmity, and no virus shall come nigh our dwelling. That is simply what we say, believe it or not. We may add to that from time to time, but that is the core of the prayer. That is the core of the prayer. And we pray that. We speak that over ourselves. We speak that over our bodies. And then we'll, we'll add to it, we thank you that this school is quarantined. We thank you that the Holy Spirit is the quarantine over this school. We thank you that no sickness, no disease, no infirmity should come near our classroom, should come near our, uh, my friends or the students to come near, uh, uh, come into the uh, cafeteria, the gym, a real simple prayer that she can pick up, all right? Now, for you, it might be a little bit more uh, 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 
wordy as it relates to the word of God. I'm just saying this is a good place for you to start to activate the presence of God over you. Now, you can add to that and broaden it out and get deeper into the prayer, you know, however you want to do that. I'm saying but that's a good place to start. All right. So with that being said, you all, I'm going to go ahead and, and go into prayer right now. All right. And understand that we want to activate this Psalms 91 in our lives. All right. So what I want to do, I want to continue just before I do that, just before we go into prayer. I want to go ahead and read a little bit more into this. All right. Uh, just reading uh, to give us that foundation of the word of God. All right. It says in verse seven, it says a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked because thou hast made Yahweh or Yahua. All right. Which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. All right. And I want you to know that it's, it's your responsibility to make him your dwelling place. It is your responsibility based upon verse one, based upon verse two, it says, because thou has made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. So it is your responsibility to do that. He says, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague. There it is again, either plague or, or diseases or, or anything of that nature, sores or wounds. Um, any type of afflictions, all right? And it's, it even it really goes into leprous, okay? Being a leper, all right? Come nigh thy dwelling. Notice he's saying it, it, it shall not come nigh your dwelling. Shall not come nigh thee. Why? Because you made God your dwelling place, right? He's your secret place. And so again, when you understand that your body is the secret place that God dwells in, all right? So anything that tries to attach itself to you, to your physical body, your soul, your spirit has no legal right to do so. Why? Because your body is God's temple. And so understand when you look at that from a spiritual standpoint and from heaven standpoint, because your body is the temple, because your body is the tabernacle, nothing should be able to, to penetrate that presence of God that's abiding on you, in you and through you. OK, so with that being said, now only you can to, can actually shut down your protective layer when you're not discerning the times. Remember, that's what we stated earlier. If you don't discern the time of what hour it is and you don't discern the season that that we are in, then you leave yourself vulnerable to the to the seasons that the world is portraying. OK, see, the world portrays the seasons of sickness, the seasons of disease, infirmity, you know, war, uh, a lack of peace, destruction. That's the seasons that, of the world. It all it's always going to be here. But when you recognize the presence of God and the hour that you are living in, in his presence, then guess what? You can be oh God. You can be in a place of refuge. You can be in a place of of security. You can be in the place, my God, of habitation. You can be in the place where the angels are taking charge over you. Hallelujah. Why? Because you are abiding and you become the temple of God. You become the abiding place of God. So guess what? Angels, hallelujah, seraphims and, and cherubs are covering you under the shadow of the almighty. All right. So they're covering you. They're protecting you. Hallelujah. So this is why he says, he says, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. So they are keeping you. OK, they are showing you they're hedging you about. Just like I said, this word hedge is the word in Hebrew is Shamar. And Shamar starts out with the word for fire, Shamar, fire. And then also another uh, Hebrew letter there, uh, Shamar, starts out with the word as it relates to uh, fire, the, the next letter for this word shamar is mem. Okay, the first letter is sheen, the second letter is mem, and the last word is resh, which means head or man. Okay, so again, you have this security. Why? Because you're in the presence of God. 
God is fire. And it talks about coming from the throne of God is this living water. God is an all-consuming fire. So you have the, the wall of fire, the protection of God as fire, but also you have the living water flowing to you, man of God, people of God, sons of the most high God. Hallelujah. All right. Now watch this. So he says, keep thee in all thy way. So he's going to shamar you. All right. He's going to put you in the in the ram of fire and the living water is going to be flowing to you. Hallelujah. Where you are in the place of protection. All right. So he says they shall bear thee up in hand, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Now, now bear these up, meaning that he said, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. In other words, when they see that you're about to put yourself in danger, they come to rescue you. Why? Because God is your habitation. You have made him. You have chosen him to be your habitation. And then he says, thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, and, and, and the young lion and the dragon shall trample under thy feet. Now notice, verse 11, 12, and 13 go together. So a lot of people look at that at verse 12 as though you're going to hit your feet. No, he says, lest thou die. In other words, if he can see where you're about to go into some type of trouble, he's going to rescue thee. All right. But then he comes and he said, now your feet will be upon the lion and the adder. Hallelujah. That you will trample them under your feet. My God. Hallelujah. Because he set his love upon me. Therefore, will I deliver him? I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life shall I satisfy him. Show him what? My salvation. And the word salvation right there in Psalms 91 16 in the Hebrew is the word Yahshua Yahshua all right so the word salvation in Psalms 91 16 is spelled in Hebrew Yahshua all right so guess what he's going to reveal to you Yahshua let's pray father in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach we give you honor, praise, and glory, and we thank you for the presence of God that's upon us right now. We activate. Why? Because we understand the seasons and the times that we are living in. We understand in the world, Father, there's darkness, there's chaos, there's diseases, there's wars, there's famine, there's pestilence that wants to arise and spread over the continent of this world. Of this world, the continent father of China, hallelujah, and spread the coronavirus. So I decree and I declare by the presence and power and by the, the word of the Lord, according to Psalms 91, that we come into this place of your almighty hand. We come into this place of your protection. We come into the place of Samak. In the name of Yahshua, we come into the place, my God, of Shamar, my God, the place of this all-consuming fire and where the river of life is flowing. So we come to activate the river of God. We come to activate the fire of God. Hallelujah. We come to activate the hedge and the protection. Why? Because we come into your presence, Lord. We come to know, hallelujah, and we come to understand the wisdom of God is our protection. And and so we come in the mindset to know, to run to you, because when we run to you, we are safe. Hallelujah. So I pray over everyone on this call right now that their bodies, as they come to understand that my body is a temple of the living God. It is the presence of God where you dwell. You live in me. You move in me. You have your being in me. So we thank you that we are protected. We thank you that no disease, no infirmity, hallelujah, no coronavirus, my God, no influence from outside sources, hallelujah, of this world of diseases and infirmities shall come nigh our dwelling. Why? Because our body is your temple. Because you are our dwelling place. You abide in us and we abide in you. Hallelujah. And so we're asking what we will according to your promises, according to your word. Hallelujah. Send that wall of fire around your people, my God. Because we are discerning the season and we are discerning the times. 
And so I decree and declare, hallelujah, that every onslaught that the enemy has released, hallelujah, against the people of God, hallelujah, we decree and declare that it be dismantled, that it be destroyed, that it be removed, hallelujah. So we come now and we activate our covenant, our covenant relationship with you. And our covenant with you says that you said, hallelujah, that you will put us under the canopy of your wings. We'll come up under the pinions of your wings. Hallelujah. And under your wings shall we trust. Hallelujah. You said it will not come. Now I dwell it. No pestilence. Hallelujah. No plagues, my God, in the name of Yahshua shall come now I dwell it. Father, we thank you now that even our children as they go on to school, hallelujah, even to colleges, hallelujah, even into the workplaces in the name of Yahshua, we decree and declare that there will be a quarantine, but the quarantine is the power of the Holy Ghost. It's the power of the Spirit of God. It's the fire. It's the wall of God. Father, we sound the trumpet into the atmosphere now. We lift up our voices. Ha, God, as a trumpet of God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, and we activate now. Ma, 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 God. Ma, ma, ma. Ma, na, mo, no, shekaya. In the name of your son, Yahshua. Father, we thank you for salvation. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for healing. And for there, our God, for those who have already experienced maybe some type of virus, some type of disease, even the flu. Right now, Father, we take, hallelujah, you as a substitute. We exchange our sickness and our diseases, hallelujah, for your healing. We change our sickness and our diseases, my God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah for your presence right now. In Yahshua's name, we decree it to be so. Hallelujah. We decree it to be so. Hallelujah. We take on your name now. We take upon your name upon us. Your name is a strong tower. And the righteous run to it. And we're saved. So we take upon your name. Hallelujah. We receive it now. Hallelujah. And we cover ourselves in your presence. We cover ourselves in the blood of the Lamb. Even when the death angel came to destroy in the land of Egypt, and the blood was put over the doorposts, Father, we decree and declare that the blood of the Lamb the life source, the DNA of God, the DNA of Yahshua is running through our veins. Hallelujah. Why? Because we are the sons of the Most High God and your spirit is the seed that has been implanted into us. And therefore, we are new creation. We are new creation. We are new creation, so we activate the healing virtue, the healing balm of Yahshua. Cover your people. Protect your people in the name of Yahshua. For we abide under the shadows of the Almighty. You are our resting place. In the name of Yeshua, we cancel all the enemy has planned, all the campaign that the enemy has released to come against those who walk in light. We thank you for the glory of God. The glory of God is our defense. According to Isaiah chapter four, we activate it even now. Your word says, my God. It says, you will be created, my God. It says in Isaiah 4, verse 5, I want to read this to you and we're praying to it. It says, the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Zion, upon her assemblies, a cloud and a smoke by day and a shining and a flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. Upon all the glory shall be a defense. 
Now, this word defense is the word for kupa. And kupa means a chamber, a closet, a canopy. And so he's referring to the glory of God being a canopy, being this chamber, or being a covering that defends the people of God. So I want to pray according to Isaiah 4 and 5. Also, I want to read Isaiah 4 and 6. And it says, and there should be a tabernacle, all right, for a shadow in the daytime. Again, that word shadow is the word for defense, all right? It should be a protection in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge, a shelter. A, a refuge is a place of hope. And for a covert from the storms and the rain. All right. So let's pray that the glory of God that we talked about in Isaiah 60. Let's pray according to Isaiah 4, verse 5 and 6. Father, we thank you again. And we pray into Isaiah chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. That you said upon all the assemblies of Zion. And we pray according to Hebrews chapter 12. According to the writer. It says that we have not come to Mount Sinai. But we have come to Mount Zion. To the city of the great God and king. To the innumerable company of angels. And to the just spirits made perfect. Father, we activate by prayer, by supplication. This is our petition. We release this petition before your throne. And we ask, Father, that you will release a restraining order against the enemy, against diseases. For those that are listening right now under the sound of my voice, those that are on the conference call line, those that are listening on the audio, just as sure as they hear my voice, Father, we thank you for the tangibility of the touch of God right now. If they are, even if they're sickly in their bodies now, we thank you that their healing draws nigh. Why? Because the kingdom of God is at hand. It is by the spirit of the Lord that we receive our healing. You said it's because of the hand of God. You said go and heal the sick. Cast out devils. Freely we receive, freely we give. And you said let them know that the spirit of God has come upon them. Let them know that the kingdom of God has been released. So we take full access of the authority of God and we release right now the kingdom of God over these your people and we receive the blessings of Isaiah 4 verse 5 and 6 that the glory of God should be our hoopah should be our canopy and that nothing will be able to penetrate the glory of God that's upon our lives that's upon our dwelling place so we thank you and we honor you for the defense and the fire of God by day and night. We thank you for the shadow that you release and the covert, the refuge against the destruction that comes in Yahshua's name. We thank you now that it's already done. So we say, so be it according to thy word. We thank you for the sword, for it is spirit and it is life. Your word is alive. Thank you. We receive it. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, you all. We're going to go ahead and let you go on this morning. Again, I thank you all for being here. I just wanted to kind of bring that to your attention and so you can know that you can walk in a place of protection. You can walk under the canopy of God. 
you can walk under the glory, under the shadow of the Almighty, and under the wings shall you find your refuge, shall you find your shield and your buckler and your place of protection. There's Look, fear opens the door for diseases. Don't fear what man may do. Don't fear what diseases may come out of, of some lab, okay? Trust God, submit to him, open up to the word of the Lord and pray it over you. you look, the word of God is a sword. It's a sword, it's your protection. Hallelujah. And when you understand that you have a covenant relationship and that covenant is a part of your protection, if you obey the voice of God, hallelujah, you obey the voice of the Lord, hallelujah. He says, look, uh, according to Psalms 91, according to Deuteronomy 28, hallelujah, you will be protected. You will be shielded. Hallelujah. Look, take the, the breastplate of righteousness. He says, look, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girded about with truth. Hallelujah. The blessed plate of righteousness, the shield of faith, sword of the spirit, the hammer of God, your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace and pray with all prayers and supplications. Hallelujah. And petitioning and interceding supplication in the spirit and then he lets us know look we don't wrestle against flesh and blood we wrestle against principalities and powers rulers of the darkness of this world spiritual wickedness in high places and we know that the enemy tries to control the airways right the enemy tries to control the airways but understand that god is the ultimate controller hallelujah he is the ultimate controller of the airways. Why? Because he's the breath. He's the oxygen that we breathe. He is the spirit of the Lord. And he is the wind or the air that we breathe. Hallelujah. You can't live without him. So with that being said, God knows how to protect and quarantine the air, the breath, the oxygen that you breathe. That when those diseases are released, guess what? They die in your presence. They die in your presence. They have no life in your presence. Why? Because you have the word of God and you can speak life over your life, over your environment. So again, y'all bless you all. Y'all keep you. Y'all cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Y'all lift up his countenance unto you. Give you his peace. Give you his shalom. Put his name upon you. Hallelujah. And I again, I say, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're the tabernacle of God. He dwells in you. And the air around you is the breath, the oxygen of God. Hallelujah. He is the wind of God, the Holy Spirit. Breathe in him and he will destroy and devalue. And oh, my God, it will have no bearing in your presence. He says, won't even come nigh you. Won't even come nigh your dwelling. When you make the most high your dwelling place, your habitation. May y'all bless you until next time.